<laughs> so um, yeah, I came into Red Hat working on the GNOME project. It was Havoc Pennington actually who hired me back in the day. Um, yeah, so I've been around Red Hat for a good while now. Um, I was uh, working on the GNOME project initially, then I moved to work on kind of virtualization and systems management stuff. So I've worked on everything from like the kernel to QMU, KVM, yeah. all that kind of stuff, and Red Hat Enterprise virtualization. And, uh, and then made the, the switch to OpenStack when, I, when it was kind of clear we needed to, to get involved there. To really use it. In terms of the uh, volume of commitments, uh, of commits, and I know you, you also led the, the message list just behind theory uh, by what was it, 100 messages or whatever for the last thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, how, how do you. Um, how do you direct yourself in terms of the effort? Is there, is there some kind of macro plan that says this is where I'm going to be spending my time on commits that comes from Brian, or is it just as needed? No, absolutely not. I mean, um, like I'm the technical lead on the team, so I'm, I'm kind of self-directed, and I've kind of got two modes to my the, the way I approach what I'm doing. I'm either trying to make, help make the upstream project a success by tackling kind of what I see as maybe cross-project issues or whatever, um, kind of really picking and choosing areas that I think. Um, you know, needs help, no one else is really poking at it and trying to figure out how we make progress in them. Um, and so I'll start poking at those things and that's kind of one half of my job and the other half of my job is kind of the internal, kind of directing what we're doing, everything around OpenStack really kind of, you know, what, what we should be doing next, what, say, new people hired, what they should be looking at and all that kind of stuff. Sure. Um, so it's really switching between the, those kind of two modes of, of thinking about my work. I mean, I have a lot of commits, but a lot of them are cleanup patches and stuff like that. So actually, like I, I, every release I've been doing these statistics about, um, you know, the number of commits per developer and, and projects sure. and stuff. And I'm really embarrassed to see my name at the top because I know sure. actually all my commits this this release, you know, were were helpful, but if I can compare them to some of the other, you know, sure. it might have been 200 commits, but there were 200 pretty trivial commits. So, Good. Um, uh, and now, I know you mentioned GNOME, and I know that's a project that has its own sets of challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, how is OpenStack fundamentally different in a development perspective from, from GNOME? And I know GNOME is entirely different than, say, cloud, but yeah. developers are developers, and development processes can be similar or can be very different. Yeah, I actually see it. I actually put down a lot of my success in OpenStack to the fact that I've, I've been through all this before in GNOME and I kind of know how, that's, I, I don't like to use the word politics, but just the dynamics of lots and lots of d different developers with different, um, again, I don't like the word agendas, it's it's kind of interests or priorities or the way they kind of see the things and actually how to, how to work with all those people and how to try and drive consensus between people and stuff like that. We went through all of that um, in the GNOME days and, and really just even before I actually started working on GNOME back when I was in university, just watching the GNOME mailing list, seeing how consensus you know, was built or how you know, flame wars were completely unproductive or whatever, really, really, really taught me how to engage with the open source community because it's 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 as diverse as, as a project like GNOME. Um, and it, it really is filled with developers who are very passionate about making OpenStack a success, irrespective of who they work for. No. I mean, I, I, to be honest, I've, I've stopped following GNOME development, except from a, a very far for the last five years or so. Um, but, uh, you know, I do see what they're going through now, and I really, really feel um, I really feel for those GNOME developers who are, you know, they've put so much work into GNOME 3, and I, I think it's really awesome. Um, and, you know, they're being flamed by a, a vocal minority for, for really, really, really awesome work. Um, and we kind of went through that in, in the GNOME 2 days as well. So I was working on GNOME 2 initially, and everybody loved their GNOME 1.4, and we came along with GNOME 2, and people thought it was the end of the world. People, you know, GNOME would die, or people would stick with GNOME 1.4, and sure. everybody. Now it's GNOME 2 that people are trying to, to, to fight for. I think, I think it'll pass. I think. Um, GNOME has a really strong community, we, it's still a lot of promise, I think they've done absolutely awesome work. I, when I was working on the GNOME project, I actually or maintained the GNOME panel, and so a lot of the con controversy about GNOME 3 has been the GNOME shell, which replaced, I guess, what I worked on previously, sure. and I think it, they've done an absolutely awesome job, I think, it's, I think it's great, and I think people should be um, a lot more supportive of what they do. Future thing. We've been through one major transition so far, and that was the rewriting of Keystone. Um, that went, it's kind of interesting. Um, that in, a, in another community that might have been um, extremely painful and extremely kind of politically painful, but in OpenStack I think everyone saw um, there, there tends not, controversies tend not to gain the kind of, um, you know, totally out of control, out of proportion type flame war type um, um, 
discussions like that just doesn't tend to happen so much in open stack, which I think is really positive. I'm not sure why it why it is, um, I, whether we're a more pragmatic set of developers or whatever. But you know, so Keystone was rewritten by uh, an individual and came along and said, "My Keystone's better than your Keystone," and everybody kind of looked at it and went, hmm, "It actually is better." So let's let's switch. Um, so, but I think I think. Incremental improvements. Like my conclusion for, from the GNOME kind of thing would be if you can make changes incrementally rather than have a big massive change, um, a big massive uh, transition, that, that, that's generally going to be a lot more kind of acceptable to people and stuff. And so we